Welcome to Lizzie's Workshop and this week's Mixed Media Monday. Uh, today I am starting off with doing the title page for my 2017 art journal. I did discuss that I had come up with a theme for this year of Get a Grip and this is going to be the title page for that um, album or book or journal I guess you could say. Um, so I'm starting off with wanting to put a face on here and um, I go through and add in some stencil and some color first. So I add in the um, pink and some purple from the Dilutions paints with some stencils. I didn't, I lost the, the video coverage or maybe I forgot to take video coverage of the pink. That's basically just using the um, bubblegum pink Dilutions paint through a stencil and then the purple is also uh, the crushed grape from Dilutions paint for, through another stencil. So once I have those on there I go through and throw on some more um, gesso. I I put on this face and this face is I bought it through um, artistseller.com and I believe that it, it is um, one of Jamie Doherty's, but I, I don't know 100% if it is one of her stencils, but it definitely is through Artist Seller so as a supplier. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to white out that face. And so I figure, okay, well, I'm going to start getting a base skin color on there. So I grabbed the gesso to make the white base. And then I grabbed my water barrel uh, brush and realized, oh, I don't want to do the water barrel brush yet because the gesso is still wet. And that'll ruin the brish bristles of my water barrel brush. It'll make them nice and um, solid. I don't want to do that. So I grabbed my Neo Color 2 and I'm using the flesh colored uh, crayon. And I'm just adding that to the gesso and kind of just trying to tint the gesso in a bit of a flesh tone to as a starting point. Now this this video is all about um, layering and layering and layering and layering and layering. I add and take away so many layers of color that it's just um, constant kind of thing. So I'm trying to get the right highlights in the face. I'm trying to get the color nice and smooth and I just kind of keep going until I am satisfied with that and that's kind of how it has to go. Now if you notice the pink Dilutions paint keeps coming through my through my work and the reason that it does that is because it is a water-based paint or an ink ba water and ink based paint and um, it is going to it, well okay it's, it's an acrylic paint but it is a water based kind of thing and it will continue to come through to the top of be drawn through to the top of this painting all the way to the end because every time I add another layer of an acrylic uh, base it will draw that acrylic color or that ink color up through all of the other layers so how it looks like she has facial tattoos now that won't change. She's going to have those facial tattoos all the way through until the, till the end. It may look like it doesn't, but once it dries, she will have them. And I'm okay with that. I did that uh, with intention, and I'm happy with the way that this face finishes off. While I was trying to get the right color tones in, though, I did figure, okay, well, I'm going to see if I can get rid of those facial tattoos a little bit. Um, but uh, as part of the process, just because I was trying to get the tinting right and it kept skewing, skewing my eye the wrong direction. Um, so I do try to cover up the pink in her cheek uh, after a little while. So I'm adding in more flesh tone there with my Neo Color 2 and then I'm going to use the water barrel brush in order to uh, liquefy it or activate it. And then I'm just going to add layer upon layer upon layer of these Neo Color 2s until I'm satisfied with the, the color arrangement that I end up with at the end. Now I, I really love these Neo Color 2's because they layer on really nice and, and um, I can get them on nice and thick or you can run them like watercolors and have them nice and loose and have them look watercolory. 
Um, it doesn't it doesn't always have to be exactly like a watercolor because these go on so nicely that you can have any effect that you really want to go through for from the nice thick heavy blended kind of thing all the way through to the watercolor look I've never really tried them with the watercolor look because I'm one of those people who just adores the saturation of color and the watercolor look seems to have too much um, white space involved in the creation of it so I really struggle with watercolor um, as a medium as it is but I just adore the what neo color twos so here I am I'm I'm putting on this layer of of gesso with the thought that it's going to help me cover up those facial tattoos but it's not going to because once again I'm adding a layer of acrylic color and it's going to draw the, those dilutions paints all the way up to the top here. And I'm, I end up, you know, thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't bother coloring them. I should just love those facial tattoos and be on, move on with my life. And that really simplifies everything by just adoring them rather than, rather than trying to remove them. Sometimes you have a plan for a page and the page ends up telling you what your plan was rather than you telling the page what the plan was so this is one of those ones I, I had this idea in my head of what I was going to create and then as I went along I just kinda had to add things in and take them out and add it in and take it out and and see where the page wanted me to take this so this next layer I'm trying to add in some just a little bit of shadowing just a little bit of definition into the face a little bit of um, darkness around some of the features and it's starting to look pretty good but I decide then that well sh you can't just have a head hovering I'm gonna have to add in a neck and then you can't just have a neck long giraffe neck you totally can have those things my brain just could not have those things so I went through and drew in a neck and I drew in uh, the top of her shoulders with a shirt and that made my my eye much happier at this point I'm thinking well maybe she should have one of those really nice big cowl neck turtlenecks and I thought well no <laughs> so first I, I add on the gesso and then I'm going to let that dry probably hit it with my heat gun and then I'm going to go in with my pencil again to draw in exactly where her chin should be and then draw in her neck and in her shirt as well so I, I have to I have to comment here that um, I went back through and I watched some of my videos from the past couple years and I have to say that I yawn a lot in all my videos and I never really realized that when I was recording them or listening to them after recording to make sure they were good and so forth and um, to realize that I yawn so much in my videos was actually quite hilarious because usually I have to wait until the house gets quiet before I can do my voiceovers and often that is the um, witching hour you know like the 12 o'clock till 3 o'clock in the morning kind of thing so the reason you hear me yawning so much in all my videos is because I do do the voiceovers and the narrations quite late at night and I really <laughs> after listening to a couple of my videos I was so astounded by it that I I have to put a little apology in here for all of those viewers who watch all along um, I'll try in the future to edit out the yawning <laughs> this um, lifestyle I've got here of, of student and mother and all that stuff it doesn't it's not very conducive to sleep so um, sorry for that so this next layer I'm putting on is once again going to put in all the the shadows and I'm going to add them and, and take them away and this layer I kind of had to go over a few times because I end up with these these hard line shadows and I didn't want hard line shadows I wanted this grade of shadow uh, and and highlight on her face that would be nice and smooth and not this harsh kind of in your face kind of thing and so I do go over it several times with the same colors 
just to try and get the, the color blocking in correctly. I really enjoy where she ends up at the very end of the project, but it took quite a long time to get here. Um, I had to take about four hours worth of um, filming footage to, in order to get this shorted and shorten it all down to this, this uh, I think now we're at a half an hour, maybe a little over a half an hour video. So that's what it, it ends up uh, being is eliminating what you can without harming what you guys see of the process and also trying to make it as short as possible. I've been um, looking at my stats and asking other people about their stats as well and trying to figure out what is the optimal time for a video and so on and so forth and I'm trying to figure out if it is people speed up my videos faster than where I speed them up or if they um, if they only watch a certain segment of it watch the beginning and then watch the end or or how it actually works and trying to cue into how my husband and I and my children watch videos and if it's my children watching videos then they are watching them constantly and they're not doing any real viewer engagement they're definitely watching the video they're definitely sitting there for half the day watching YouTube but there's not a whole lot of viewer engagement and a lot of the um, stats and the payment and the all of that stuff that YouTube is now doing is based on viewer engagement and it's very hard to like for example the, the videos my kids watch are mostly gaming videos but um, I don't know how they would go about doing the viewer engagement simply because they my children can't comment when they're watching it on the Wii U and I really don't want them having access to that kind of um, commenting and conversation and engaging in conversation when they are on on YouTube so it's going to be interesting to see how the um, requirement of viewer engagement affects different channels and uh, the way that things are operated for YouTube because you can watch it on so many different systems and then so that brings me back to my videos as well. I'm wondering how long people actually sit and watch. Do people watch the entire video? Um, do people speed up the videos? And um, do I not get a whole lot of comments because people are watching it on devices other than their computers? And um, those are, are some of the questions that I thought I would pose to my audience. So please do leave a comment and let me know how you watch my videos or what device you watch them on so that I can kind of figure out um, where the, the viewers are coming from. So now I've, I've gone in and I've added in some orange tints and I've added, I'm adding in like an orangey, reddy brown now. The orange color that I added in was called saffron and that's also the neo color too. And the brownish color that I'm adding in is called English Red. That's also a Neo Color 2. I get my Neo Color 2s at a place called Delta Art and Drafting. It is in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And I, I have this addiction to uh, going in and just seeing what's in their store and accidentally walking out with, you know, $100 worth of stuff in my hand. And so I don't go there unless I have cash because that limits how much I actually spend in the store or else I end up, you know, filling the truck kind of thing. But um, they are, they cater to students and they cater to drafting students and art students and all kinds. And uh, they have the Neo Color 2s as being able to be sold as individuals. And when I buy them as individuals, I can go in and I can say, oh, which colors came in in the new color palette for the spring or or the summer or the fall or whenever they bring out their new colors and I can get them right away. One time when I went in there to get my the new color, new Neo Color 2s, um, they let me in the back room to see what colors they had that had just come in and as I'm looking at it, uh, the girl went to pull the rack forward so I could reach it and she dumped the entire rack of Neo Color 2s all over the workbench and the floor and there were hundreds and hundreds of these um, 
watercolor crayons all over the floor and she, I said do you want do you want help sorting it all back out and she's like no 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 it's okay I wanted to sit here for four hours anyways <laughs> and she literally had hundreds of crayons to sort back out to put back into their into their boxes because the whole rack just came crashing down I felt real bad and and tried to buy one of every color that day but uh yeah, so I have a lot of Neo Color 2s. The blue that I put in the eye is called Sapphire Blue, and I often grab this blue for my eyes because I have very, very uh, bright blue eyes, and so this color makes me think of them. I, I can't tell you if it's a direct match or not. It probably isn't. I probably think I have more blue in my eyes than I actually do, but... For the lips, I put in the color pink to start as a base color and then I used carmine and so the carmine covered the lips and I always take the lip color and use that for the cheeks <clears throat> it usually seems to go really well when I match the lip color with the cheek color so if I were just to do like a baby pink for the lips I would also do a baby pink in the cheek the hair is the same color I used for some of the shadowing, and that is the um, English red. And I'm, I put a little bit of a ponytail down at the bottom too, just to give the neck some definition. And then I'm going to see if she's dry enough. And I'm going back through with the flesh tone because I don't like how chunky these colors have dried. So I'm adding in another color of or another layer of the flesh and once I get that all blended in I'm, I'm much more content with the direction that this face is going. So then it, it goes I go through and I smooth it all out and everything seems to just kind of flow nicely together after this and all of the shadows and all of the uh, highlights seem to just end up doing exactly what I want them to do. I think I go back in and add one more layer of color after that to the face, but smooth out the chunkiness of the cheek, but keep the blush there, and uh, so on. I really, in the last couple of years, started to enjoy drawing faces. Um, that started in December of 2014, I believe. I tried out my first um, drawing class, online drawing class, and that really kind of caught my interest. It was a drawing of a self-portrait, and I really enjoyed that. So I thought, okay, well, let's try this a little bit, a little bit more, and see how how well I can do at this. I am grabbing onto my Stabilo All just to add some darkness and some um, definition to the face. Uh, black eyebrows, black light highlights in, or dark lights in the, in the hair, some definition around the chin where it's nice and dark with the shadow, and allowing all of that to um, liquefy with the water barrel brush. I'm liking. I'm really liking the color of this girl's hair. It really, it really goes well with that blue of the eye. So then I'm using my very very fine water barrel brush for the eyebrows, so I can get that those points in there, and also for the pupils of the eyes and the the little curve inside the ear, and then the nostrils, of course. So once that is dry, I'm going to um, come in with the uh, knee, uh, sorry, the Stabilo All, and I'm going to go in round and do the title. And the title, as per the other video that I created, was Get a Grip, and that is basically my model for this year, trying to get control of of everything that's going on within this life of mine. 
So I go through and do this with the Stabilo Oil and then I have to activate it with the water barrel brush and it gets really nice and thick and watercolory and and black and solid and I really really like how that comes out. But then I go through and I do a border and when I once I have the border done the words and the borders it all just makes the whole thing go a little bit too dark and so because I don't want it all that dark I have to go back in and lighten it up again. So here I'm trying to lighten her face up again. I wanted it to smudge and, and move. Uh, a lot of times I can get it to do that. But on this face it just was not going to move no matter how I did it. So I did have to bring in the water barrel brush to get it to move. That's adding the highlights back into her face. Oh, I, I guess I used just a regular brush for that. So this brush is a flathead brush and I use it in kind of a scrubbing motion. And that scrubbing motion allows for the blending of color and, and it goes, uh, depending on how much force you use on it, you can get quite a few of the layers to blend all in together. And that's all I'm doing here is, is blending in that thing. I don't have much water on here, like the, br the brush is just barely damp. I didn't use the water barrel brush because I didn't want to do, use ruin the brush with the scrubbing motion, but um, I'm I'm using this brush and it's I literally I have a damp spot on my paper towel there on my napkin, and I'm just going to dab it on and off just enough to get moisture on there to get the the color to move, and then I've got the nice highlights all nice in her face now. I really like how this girl ended up. I um, once I once I have her the just the way that I want her to be. I decide I want to come in with the black um, marker or black pen, and I want to add more detail in her face with the black pen. But the problem that I'm going to have is that the all of my pens have the either the felt tip nib or they have the um, the, the harder nib, and if I were to come in and write on there, because it's all in Neocolor 2's, it would kind of sink into that and I would have all this this problem with that. So instead of trying to write in the black pen on top of the Neocolor 2's, I decide to seal her face. Well, I put the border on first, but I decide to end up uh, sealing her face. And I, and I just grabbed whatever I had handy to me at the time. And that was the um, Golden's Polymer Medium Gloss. And I don't usually use glosses on my page. I usually use mattes just because of the way of the camera and the lights reflect off of it. I usually just use the, the matte medium. Um, this time, oh, sorry, baby cameo. <laughs> that was my husband's idea. He came in and I had to grab the picture quick before he put the baby down on it. But um, so I just grabbed the polymer medium and it was a gloss that I put on here and then I wanted to heat set it but I forgot that when you have it as a gloss it kind of ripples and does kind of the um, you know the old paint effect where it pulls the paint particles apart and kind of makes it it look like the paint is peeling. Well that's the effect that you end up getting when you heat set the gloss medium. So I had put it on in a really thick layer because the brush I used wasn't soft enough and when I did do that it was smudging the black as I brushed and you can really see it on the letters you end up seeing it just a little bit on the face because I I used the brush very very lightly on the face but it does end up smudging here and there and then so I put it on in a very, very thick layer so that the brush was essentially not even touching the surface of the painting. And then I go through and, and cover up the rest of it, trying not to get too much smudging going on, being very gentle, but still not succeeding overly much. So 
once I, I heat set this, what ends up happening is the color ends up pulling here and there and it gives it kind of this antique kind of um, look to it with like a bit of a, a crackle to different parts of the face. And I really liked how that texture brought out different aspects of the face when it was all said and done. So I will probably heat set it the next time I use the gloss as well. So this pen is not my typical pen. Normally I would go for the um, the pit pens, pit artist pens, but this time I had this Stetler Lumocolor permanent pen just hanging out on my workbench. And so that's the one that I ended up reaching for. And it's it's also waterproof on most surfaces and it's refillable. So I thought, hey, what the heck, I'll, I'll give it a try. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I went through and, and added in all the dark parts that I had originally wanted. And then I go and add her shape of her eyeballs and some eyelashes and highlight the parts of her nose. And then wherever there was like a dramatic smudge that I couldn't, I couldn't really control, I do go through and add some more ideas to it. You know, I on these on these eyes I end up adding little um, triangles underneath them because it is art after all here's where I'm adding her eyelashes in just basically check marks along the eye I did it from two different directions so that I would get different thicknesses of pen and different strokes because so, my eye eyelashes are quite thick and heavy and go in different directions and so forth and then I recreate the shape of her nose and redefine the tip of her nose. I should have added some more highlights at the tip of her nose, but I didn't actually end up going in and doing it. And there I am correcting smudges by putting the little triangles under her eyes and then redefining her lips with the black as well. I really liked how this, this pen performed. Um, often when I'm using my pit pens, I get like a stutter in the flow of the ink and this pen didn't do that to me. So I don't know, I can't say that I would recommend this over the pit pens because I've only ex used it on this one um, project, but I will continue to play with them, I think. I added a collar to her shirt, I added in her, the eyelashes, and I added in the little tears below her eyes. Here is an earring. And then when I leaned back and looked at this, I thought, you know, now I've gotten too dark. So when I bring in my white here to correct the whites of her eyes, I also figure that I've got to correct a few other things as well. So I fill in those triangles with the white and I add some more white to her nose, but it doesn't really do what I want it to do. It doesn't really do what I want it to do on her lips. And then I fill it in on her earring as well. Something about this is that I really like the white on here, the way that I did it with the, in the triangles and the, and the heart. And then I decided I was going to use some a new product that I hadn't opened yet. So I reached for my Wink of Stella and um, I'm going to add that in there too. And I reached for the silver one rather than the clear one and in hindsight I probably should have reached for the clear one. This white pen that I'm using here is the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen, but it's the big brush and it's got India ink in it in the white. And so I'm trying to lighten up that dark border a little bit. So this page is the title page for my book for this year. and that means that I'm pretty much done with the title page, but I usually like them to be a little bit more 3D by the time that I all is said and done. So there's nothing to say that this has to be finished. Um, I will probably go back through and be adding something three-dimensionally to this by the time that this book is finished. But right now, while I'm trying to create art within it, I probably will keep it as a two-dimensional cover for now. So thanks for watching Lizzie's Workshops Mixed Media Monday. I hope that you enjoyed this video, that you got inspired, and that you will join me again next week for the next spread that I create. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and let me know how you watch my videos. Thanks for watching at Lizzie's Workshop.